Hey everyone, it's John, and today what we're going to be doing is looking at some more network automation using the tool NetMiko. And in this video, what I'm going to do is show you a basic OSPF automated deployment using conditional statements. Now, if you're unfamiliar with conditional statements, in Python, it's basically your use of your if statements, your else, and your elif statements. If that doesn't make sense, then just watch the video and I'll try my best to explain it as best I can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep this video short, I know I keep threatening that, but this time I'm really going to try to keep it short. And what I will say is, I'm going to timestamp the video, so if you want to just go straight to where the script is deployed, check the comments. And if you want to actually use the script, the script will be available at this GitHub link here at IPv0 slash IPv0. Now, what I want to say is as well, I've actually written this script in two forums. One is a simple forum, that's going to be the one which I'm going to use to describe the logic of what's happening in the script. And the second one is going to be the one I'm actually deploying because it's got some additional configurations just for formatting to make it look a little bit better. It kind of uses colour and whatnot so it keeps things actually easier to read when the script is actually deploying. Okie doke. So with that said, let's have a look at the script. So if we just pull up the terminal here. Okay, so we're doing ls, you'll see that I've got two scripts here. The one on the left is basic OSPF, that's going to be the one which I'm going to use to describe what's happening. It's been stripped down so you can maybe identify the logic a little bit easier. And the second one, check OSPF, is the one which I'm actually going to deploy, which has got the additional configurations for just some basic formatting, adds in some uh, colours and whatnot. So let's just look at the first one. Oh, edit that. Right, okay. So. At the very top, we've got from NetMiko import connect handler. Now this is a module within NetMiko to actually handle the SSH connections. The connect handler is going to look for some things and it's going to look for like say an IP address, a device type, a username and a password. Now I've defined these all up here because NetMiko knows when I type in Cisco iOS, it knows it's dealing with a Cisco device. This has been abstracted for you. You don't need to worry about it. If you just tell NetMiko Cisco iOS, it knows the type of hierarchical structure in which Cisco works. Now, username, I have configured on all of these devices here, um, a username of John with a privilege 15 and a password of Cisco. The privilege 15 just means I'm going to automatically accelerate to a uh, privilege exec mode rather than have to do an enable. But still, what I've written in the script is this little thing here, okay? So, let's just go through it slowly. So, devices actually, let's go to this first. What I've created here is a, what's called a doc string, and this is just a way to effectively to list my devices. R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, R8, and what I'm doing is splitting them into uh, separate strings effectively, and what I'm going to do is iterate over them, so I'll we'll have, I'll log into R1 first, then R2, R3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's what this little loop is doing here for device and devices, so each uh, IP address is going to have the variable name device, okay? So what I'm doing here is once we iterate into the first one, R1, okay, we're going to print the word connecting to device plus the device, which is going to be, in this case, R1. The second time it loops around, it's going to go to R2, the third time R3, so on and so forth. Now, the variable here, net connect, is a connect handler, which is what we're using, the module from NetMiko. And again, NetMiko wants to have these this type of set information. The first thing is the IP address. Now remember, the IP address is just going to be the device, which is going to be R1's IP address. And then when we look around, it's going to be R2's, R3, so on and so forth. The device type, I've just written equals device type because that's the name. I've gave that variable the name Cisco iOS. So I've basically put that in. So it's going to be device type is going to be Cisco iOS. The username NetMiko wants, I have defined the username up here as John, so NetMiko knows that it's going to be John. And the password which what which NetMiko wants, I have defined in the variable password, which is actually taking the value of Cisco. Okay, so all I'm doing here is saying NetMiko connect to this device with the IP address of the first router. I want to use a Cisco device type. The username for the SSH password is John and the password is Cisco. That's all that's happening here. Now NetMiko um, is quite smart on this effect and all it is, it's pretty much going to read the output of the command line and if it sees this little line here in the prompter, 
it's going to do an enable. So all that means is, if you recall, when you first start up, see that there? Pretty much Netmiko saying, if I see this little thing here, I know what I need to do is do enable, okay, to get me into this. That's all that is doing there. Okay, so if imprompter now, as it stands, I've configured the SSH privilege to be 15, so it's going to skip that, but I've written it in the code anyway, just so you can see it. So like I say, net connect enable, it's going to do that. Now, the next part is we've created a variable called output, and we're using this part of netmiko, just the net connect <coughs> send command. Now we use this for doing show commands, okay? So net connect dot send command, and I've just written in here the actual command which I want to set. Now, let me tell you why I've done this command, because effectively what we're going to try and do is identify if a device is running OSPF or if it is not running OSPF. Now, you can do this many ways. The way I've happened to choose is to do a show run pipe section OSPF, and I'll show you why. Right. But there's multiple ways you can do this. This is more than one way to skin a cat, I suppose. So, uh, section OSPF. Now, as you can see, there's nothing on this, okay? There's no OSPF configurations written on this. But what if I did OSPF, actually had OSPF configured on it, okay, and let's just say a net 000255, okay, so what what would output look like now, so I do a show run section OSPF, now we're going to get this, so this is basically what we're going to be looking for, okay, so if OSPF is not configured, when we do a show run section OSPF, we don't see anything. If OSPF is configured, we do a show run section OSPF and we know it starts with this router OSPF something. Now you'll see in the script, I've actually not included the one because if we were using different process IDs, I wouldn't want to say we're looking for OSPF one if we had configured router OSPF five. All I'm going to do is say look for this router OSPF. That means if we see any OSPF processes, we'll know that OSPF is running. Does that make sense? So let's go back to the script. And this is effectively what I'm doing. So send command, okay? And I've also created this variable called OSPF command. This is going to be executed if I don't have OSPF. It's going to be a default setting of just router OSPF. All the networks put into area zero, okay? Now here's the, the logic I've got here. So if not router OSPF and output, so that's pretty much saying if you don't see the words router OSPF in the output of this command, okay? So if you don't see router OSPF when you run show run section OSPF, what you're going to do is print OSPF is not enabled on device plus the device's IP address, okay? The next thing, I've created a second variable, which is going to be my answer to the question which the script is going to ask me. So answer is equal to the input, i.e. what I type to the question of would you like to enable default OSPF settings on plus the device IP address and I've given myself a wee prompt saying wire n, okay, so that's let me know the format, what I'm going to ask, is it going to be a yes or a no? So the logic continues, if I answer, i.e. if I type and this double equals is pretty much a comparison. It means that it's going to be looking for me to type this. So if the answer equals Y, i.e. if I push the word, if I push the letter Y, what it's going to do, it's going to send the configuration set, and I've set the configuration set as the OSPF commands. Now the OSPF command which I've gave is this variable here, and the set of commands are root OSPF1, then do this here, okay? And then I'm going to print that output, and then also print OSPF is now configured, okay? The next part is an else statement. That means that if my answer is Y, I'm going to do this. But if my answer is not Y, what I'm going to do is just print no, OS, no OSPF configurations have been made, i.e. don't make any OSPF configurations, okay? Now, here's the actual if logic in this part here. If not router OSPF and output, that's what we're going to do all this stuff, okay? But what if in the output of the show run section OSPF, what if router OSPF does appear? Okay, that's where this else statement comes in. And all we're going to do is actually print OSPF is already configured on the device plus the device's IP address. So that's the basic logic of the script. And like I say, I don't want to belabor the point too much. 
If you've got any questions or con confusion about what this is or how it works, then please leave a uh, comment in the comment box and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just remove this OSPF configuration on this now. So we've got back to show run section oh, OSPF. We don't have any and like I say I've got not got any OSPF configurations here. So if I do a show run section OSPF here there's nothing on that. So actually the, the truth of it is I've got no OSPF configurations on anything. So what I'm going to do is just deploy the script and we'll go through, we'll see the script in action and see the logic at work. Now like I say, just before I do that, I'll show you the actual real configura configuration which I'm going to be deploying. It looks a little bit different. It's the same logic, it's just got more configurations just for format and sake. So don't be kind of intimidated if you're unfamiliar with, with Python. So what I'll do is I'll actually vim it so we can see the coloration. Now, I've also imported these things called Colorama, which allow me to easily change the colour of certain text. Now you're going to see these things like print. This is just printing a space. That's basically going to align. So when you see the connecting to device, it's going to be in the centre of the screen rather than at the end. Um, I'm making some hash symbols. I'm going to use the colour magenta. Then I'm going to reset the colour back to the default of the terminal. Um, some more stuff. Again, print a new line, put some spaces in. I'm also going to put in these little squiggly lines um, and then print this in white and then the word not in red. Just all these type of things, just basic formatting to make it look a little bit easier in your eyes when you actually see the script deploying. So like I say, I'll actually upload both versions on my GitHub in case you prefer to see the basic one and I'll also upload the full uh, coloration of the check OSPF.py. So, with that said, I think what we should do is actually go and deploy the script and just see it in action. And like I say, if you get any questions, just ask it in the comment section. And I've used OSPF in this example, but there is nothing stopping you from using an almost limitless amount of permutations effectively. You could say, if I identify, do a sh check the interface if it's a trunk link, run a show command. If it's got a certain output, you know it's a trunk. And then, if it's a trunk, set storm control for this value. Else, it is an access link and set the storm control value for this value instead. So on and so forth. There's, a, there's lots and lots of ways to implement this. But like I said, I've just chosen OSPF just because it's quite straightforward and I think it'll be easier for you to kind of grasp the concepts. So, what I'll do is I'll just go over to the script here. And what I will say is, see if you actually look at the script. Um, check pi. Edit. See that we have just written R1, R2, R3, R4. How does it know which is the IP address? If you've watched my previous videos, you'll probably see that I've actually configured, um, if I do a sudo nano etsy hosts, pop the password in. I've actually given my own little DNS. So these are the actual IP addresses, 192.168.153.11. That's going to be R1.12, uh, R2. So basically, as per usual, if I just ping, say, R1, it's going to resolve it to this IP address. So the script is actually going to be using this DNS. If you don't want to do this part, what you could do instead would just be to take that out. Um, do you know what? I'll just edit this just to show you. I could just quite easily make this an IP address. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's an IP address instead. And that would be fine. But I think it looks easier or looks nicer rather if you just keep it on the actual device names. So what I'll do is. And let's have a wee look. Okay, so like I say, this is going to be the actual configurations. Edit that, and that's the full one with all the coloration, and that'll be uploaded. So what we'll do is uh, just do a Python three and just type in the name. Now what I'm going to do is when I deploy this. There is no OSPF configurations on any of them. I'll say yes, I want to deploy OSPF to half of them, and then the other half I'll say no. Run the script again, I'll say yes to them, and then finally run the script a third time, and then you should see that all of them have got the configurations on it. So, just enter that. It's connecting to device one, it's going to see there's no OSPF configurations on it, and give me a choice. 
So, OSPF is not enabled on device 1, would you like to enable default OSPF settings, yes or no? And this one, I'm going to say yes, so why? Enter. It's now made the OSPF configurations and it said OSPF is now configured, it's going to check a router 2 this time. Would you like to enable OSPF? I'll say no this time, router 2 we don't want to put OSPF on it, no. No, OS no OSPF configurations have been made, move to device 3. Would you like to enable OSPF? Yes, I will on this one. OSPF is now configured. Nope. No OSPF. No OSPF configurations have been made. Router 5 this time. Yes, for you. No, no OSPF configuration to be made on R6. And we'll do yes. Okay, and now router 8, we'll say no on that one. No. Okay, so that's how I run the script. And if we happen to go towards our... Um, Switch. So router 1 we actually put um, OSPF on it I believe, so now we've got OSPF configured on router 1 as you can see here, okay but uh, router 2 we said no, so if we do a show IP OSPF there is nothing on router 2, router 3 we said yes we want OSPF on it, so if we do a show IP OSPF we've got it on that so on and so forth, so this iterates through. Now so like I say 1, 3, 5, so on and so forth, all have OSPF configured on it. So if I run the script again, we're going to see some output when we get to those ones where it's already been configured. The script will detect that it's already configured and just skip over it. So number 1. The script knows it's already configured on device 1. R2 it's not. It's going to give us the choice again. This time I'm going to say yes to R2. And it's going to configure it in R2. OSPF is now configured. R3 is already configured. R4 going to give us a choice again. We'll say yes. Yes. Enter. And R5 will already be configured. There we go. Already configured on R5. Yes, for R6, we want to put that on this time. R7 is already configured, and the last one is R8. And we'll say yes. And it's now configured. So we'll run the script one final time and we should see all all yellow effectively. It should all be configured on all devices now. Because we've said yes to everything now effectively. Yep. Already configured on R1. Already configured R2. Already configured R3. Yep, R4 the same. Mm -hmm. R7 and the last one is R8. And that's us, so that's pretty much the script deployed, and like I say, if we happen to go to the devices, you'll see, show IP OSPF, say neighbour, check R2, this one didn't have anything on it the first time, show IP OSPF, it does this time of course, 
Make sure IPO is PF neighbor. It's got all its neighbors up. Show IP OSPF net oh. OSPF and that's it. Just check one more. Show IP OSPF neighbor and that's that. So that's pretty much the basic introduction to conditional logic using Python and using the tool NetMiko. It's very very handy and like I say, if you've never tried it before, go and download it. You can get it for free. Just uh, install it and it's got some really good documentation as well. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Like I say, if you want the scripts, check out the GitHub link. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment. And like I say, like, subscribe and all that stuff because it does help support the channel and it lets me know if you want to see more of this type of material or not. Okie doke, so thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.